The Fatui are bad guys, right? They have a large military force, seemingly infinite amounts of resources, and even artificial visions as weapons, and each time we see them, they are portrayed as antagonists. Their image isn't really helped when they are led by a group seemingly filled by bad guys. I'm talking of course about the Harbingers. The rank and file Fatui are led by a group that are infamous for their strength, cruelty, and destructive power, with the top 3 of its members being mentioned to have abilities that match even the gods. While most of the story we experience has had the involvement of a harbinger one way or another, information about the group and its members are distributed across many different stories. So in this video, let's count down all the known harbingers and see what type of people they really are. Before we dive into the members of the Fatui Harbingers, if you want to see more Genshin Impact content, do consider subscribing to the channel. The Harbingers are a group that exclusively serve the Saritza, and in total, there are 11 of them. They each hold certain roles and functions, but ultimately, their purpose is to realize the goals of the current Cryo Archon. But after the events of the main story, two seats are now currently vacant. These seats used to belong to Scaramouche, who held the 6th seat, and Signora, who held the 8th. The Harbinger's hierarchy are arranged based on strength, from weakest at number 11 to the strongest at number 1, and we know who occupies most of these seats except for number 4 and number 10. So let's start off with the lowest seat number, which is seat 11. This seat belongs to Tartalia, who was given the codename Child. Child is generally a term used to describe a young man of noble birth, but in this context, it's likely referring to how Tartalia is the lowest and likely newest member. I'm sure most of you already know about Tartalia, so I won't spend too much time on him, but he first joined the Fatui at the behest of his father, who thought it would help discipline him. His talent in combat caught the eye of another Harbinger, Pulsinella, who recommended he be entered into the Harbingers so that his combat prowess could be used to serve the Saritza. The machinations of Pulsinella aside, for Tartalia, getting to be involved in more battles is more than enough reason to join. His story is pretty well known since he is quite involved in the story of Liwei and with the Traveler, so let's move on to the 10th Harbinger. At the current point in the story, the position of the 10th Harbinger has not yet been revealed. That said, Tartaglia has mentioned that he is too low rank for Il Capitano to notice him, making Capitano likely the 4th seat and Arlecchino the 10th. Arlecchino appears as a young woman with rather unique pupils in the shape of red crosses and has white hair and porcelain-like complexion. Arlecchino's codename is the Knave or the Servant. Knave often refers to a person who is dishonest and unscrupulous, and this is apparent when we see what Tartaglia and Scaramouche have to say about her. According to Tartaglia, Arlecchino is described as someone with no loyalty whatsoever. She would sooner betray someone if she stood to gain something from it, even if that someone is the Saritza herself. Both Scaramouche and Tartaglia also describe her as having a crazier side, but masked behind an appearance of gracefulness and a polite demeanor. She's pretty much a wolf in sheep's clothing. We don't know too much else about Arlecchino save for her being the owner and operator of the House of Hearth. On its surface, this institution is an orphanage that takes in unfortunate children from different regions, seemingly to care for them. In truth, however, and in line with her wolf in sheep's clothing persona, the House of Hearth actually trains these children to be spies. Those with potential are sent all over Tevat, acting as sleeper agents for the Fatui and more importantly for Arlecchino. As such, she likely acts as the spy master of the Harbingers and Fatui, but whether the spies are loyal to the Saritza or Arlecchino herself remains to be seen. Running such operations will no doubt require some influx of capital, and so steps in the Harbinger at the ninth seat, Pantalon. By this point, the Fatui are a pretty common enemy we as players have faced. And each time we meet them, they are always seen to have a seemingly infinite source of income. This unlimited resource can be attributed to the efforts of the 9th Harbinger, who is largely in charge of all finances and economic policies in Shnesnaya. The codename of the 9th Harbinger is the Regrater, which is a term used to describe someone who buys commodities in advance and sells them at a higher price later, especially during a crisis. Pantalone is one of the few members who does not have a vision and instead relies on his vast wealth and delusion to essentially command and boss others around. Despite his lack of ability in combat, he is an expert when it comes to finances. 
His drive largely comes from the fact that he was once living in poverty, and according to Scaramouche, is obsessed with the concept of equivalent exchange. You see, to Pantalone, the gods had shorthanded him, along with many others, making them suffer while other people led richer lives. He wishes to correct this imbalance and why he currently serves the Tsaritsa. Ironically, the way he aims to achieve this is by making the other regions reliant on Shnesnaya for their finances and why he has opened banks in many other regions. His plan is to essentially make them reliant on his money and thus allow him to control them by threatening to stop resources should they ever defy him. Despite claiming to uphold equivalent exchange, his actions are opposite to this idea as he largely just wants control and likely fancies himself as a god. Now, the 8th seat is currently vacant after the death of La Signora. It's unclear at this point if there is already a replacement, but for now, let's move on to the 7th seat instead. Sandrone, or the marionette, is the 7th harbinger. She appears as a rather young woman and is first seen alongside a rather heavily modified automaton, likely to be a ruined machine. We don't really know much about her at this point except for her obsession with her research, which involves puppets or automatons in some form. Based on her codename, the marionette, it's implied that the giant mech she appears with is under her control. But it would be an interesting twist if instead of the human-looking girl being Sandrone, it's actually the giant mech. In any case, the only description we get of her from both Tartalia and Scaramouche mentions that she has a strong obsession with her research. She also seems to dislike Tartalia, but it's unclear why. The sixth spot used to be held by Scaramouche, and since his defection is now functionally empty. Again, like the eighth seat, we don't know if there are any replacements, but since it happened rather recently, it's unlikely there are any. So moving on to the fifth seat, we have Pulsinella, or known by his codename of The Rooster. Unlike most that we've heard about so far, Pulsinella's nickname has not really been explored. It could be related to his appearance, but I can't find any specific relationship between his role and a rooster, even symbolically, and I doubt his codename was given purely for his appearance. Maybe it has something to do with the role he currently holds, but I can't be sure. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas about it. Speaking of his role or job, Pulsinella is a high-ranking official within Shnesnaya. In fact, he is a mayor of one of its towns. We don't know of its specialty within the Harbingers, but I assume it has something to do with organizational skills since not only is he a mayor, but also someone who helped coordinate Fatui activities across several nations, such as in the Chasm, as well as arranging for an opening of a Fatui bank in Sumeru. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Pulsinella is also the person who brought Tartalia into the Harbingers. According to Tartalia, Pulsinella seems to take rather good care of his family and would often give Tartalia siblings with various foods and toys. This might make him appear benevolent and seemingly like somewhat of a mentor to Tartalia, but in truth, it's not so simple. Scaramouche gives us a bit more insight into his character and claims that nothing the rooster does is for the benefit of others. Instead of the idea that he is a good person, by interacting with Tartalia's family and siblings, the message that should be inferred is not that they are safe, but rather your entire family is in the hands of the rooster. Or is it wings? This implies a more subtle approach to control and power that he might personally favor, making him more akin to a mob boss than a simple thug with elemental powers. Short of just guessing, this is all we can infer about the characteristics of Pulsinella the rooster. We are now reaching the upper echelons of the Harbingers, and next up we have the 4th Harbingers. If you recall, the 4th and 10th positions have not been confirmed, but from the snippet of information we received from Tartalia, it's reasonable to assume that the 4th rank is the Captain. The Captain, or Il Capitano, is a rather mysterious person. We have not seen his real face, so as far as appearances go, it's pretty much anybody's guess. He is said to be quite an honourable person, and unlike other Harbingers, is respected and viewed highly, even by those outside the Fatui. Scaramouche actually finds the admiration he gets from the common Fatui foot soldier a bit misleading, as they paint him as someone completely infallible, which likely isn't the case. On the other hand, Tartaglia highly admires the Harbinger due to his position and strength. And so while Tartaglia and the Wanderer differ when it comes to his self-righteousness and public image, 
they can both agree that the captain is immensely strong. When Mika first laid eyes on the captain during the nights of Favonius' expedition, he immediately concluded that even a simple hit from the captain was enough to completely defeat him. And while many believe Varka, the Grandmaster, could put up a good fight, the Grandmaster himself wasn't as sure. Despite meeting on the battlefield, the captain is said to be a reasonable person and would not initiate a fight just for the sake of it. Based on his codename, the captain, it's likely that Il Capitano leads the major forces of the Fatui and perhaps functions similarly to a military general. A more militaristic role is also in line with his more honourable nature and this is likely what his true role is within the ranks of the Harbingers. Now we are getting into the top 3 ranks of the Harbingers. It's said that the top 3 are not only the most powerful members, but also have enough power individually to easily challenge a god. It makes you wonder why they choose to follow the Saritza, but that's a topic for another day. At the number 3 rank, we have Columbina, or the Damselette. Of the top 3 members, she is the one we know the least about. When she first appears alongside the other Harbingers at Signora's funeral, she seemed laid back and unassuming. However, don't let her appearance fool you. Both Tartaglia and Scaramouche sense something off with her and that she might be hiding an immense level of strength and power behind a weak facade. Tartaglia is basically a battle maniac and with each member, he can roughly identify their levels of strength at least relative to himself. But with Columbina, he can't be exactly sure. While he questions why she is in the third position, implying he has not seen her physically fight and perhaps even doubts her abilities, Instinctively, he feels something hiding beneath the surface that no one, not even the Traveller, should underestimate. Scaramouche somewhat corroborates this, but he more or less highlights that her unassuming appearance is what makes her the most dangerous. The image of a damsel or someone in need of help is something she fronts, but in truth, she would sooner take advantage of a person's benevolent nature and strike while their back is turned. It's unclear what her role within the Harbingers is, given her codename, so perhaps she is simply just one of their powerhouses. Columbina is likely a very powerful adversary, but one we know very little about. Luckily for us, we do know a bit more about the next two. At the second rank of the Fatui Harbinger sits the Doctor or Il Dottore. Now the Doctor's involvement with the main story and all its players is very broad. He was in the manga, has had his hands in the events of Inazuma, and most recently appeared in Sumeru. The details of his exploits would be worthy of its own video, so let's just briefly go over his personality and abilities. Basically, the doctor is first and foremost a scholar. He seems to be mostly interested in discovering different new things or carrying out experiments, but to what ultimate end, we don't really know. It might just be simply for curiosity's sake, as each of his experiments and area of study vary from field to field. For example, during his time in the Academia when he was known as Zendik, he was largely interested in the machines originating from Kenya. But later into his life, he started to dabble in other areas such as weaponizing the Elazar, implanting God Maya's mind to humans, and even attempting to create artificial gods. So for a lack of information, he just seems to be driven to these pursuits purely for academic purposes. But it is said that one of his primary goals is to prove that humans can be modified into gods or god equivalents through science alone. Based on his codename, he is also likely the Harbingers and the Fatui's R&D lead, creating weapons and instruments to be used in achieving their goals. Again, the story of the Doctor is actually quite detailed, so this brief explanation doesn't really do him justice, and perhaps I might make a dedicated video on him in the future. Finally, we have reached the top of the mountain, and here stands the strongest and the first of the Fatui, Piero the Jester. There are a lot of interesting things and theories about Piero, but since this isn't a theory video, I won't cover them here. Piero is actually one of the royal mages of Kenria, who was exiled and forced to endure the curse of immortality after the cataclysm. For a while, it's said that he roamed aimlessly until given purpose by the Saritza and why he now serves her. He was the one who formed the Fatui in order to achieve the goals of the Saritza and was also the person who individually sought out and invited most of the members of the Harbingers, and thus why he commands the most respect. Even his codename is related to his past with the Saritza and his supposed failures in Kenya, as he failed to prevent the previous king from tearing the veil of sin open. 
an action that is implied to have caused the cataclysm to happen. He is said to be immensely powerful, despite many not knowing anything about him. Even Scaramouche and Tartaglia know little about him as he is mentioned to only appear during important occasions. I've done a video on Piero before in the past, so if you want to know more about him, be sure to check that video out. And that's basically all the known and current members of the Harbingers. The Harbingers are an enigmatic group. Despite this video being this long, we still don't know quite a lot about them, and the information here is largely snippets of their lore. Hopefully, we learn more about them in the future storylines, and once they are fleshed out, I'll probably make a video for each of them. That does it for this one though, and if you enjoyed it, do consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one. As usual, have a nice day.